Okay. Wednesday worship, 1 p.m. 11 9 11 in Connecticut. Welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us. So we will do the prelude intro and we will get started on a more seasonable but beautiful November day in Lebanon. Prelude today is one step he leads. All right, thank you for that. Was very pretty, and it's true. Just one step, and he will lead the way. So here are your announcements for today. New York City was fun on Friday. It was nice to see something different, but GCT, Stout, and Hudson Yards are always welcome. The next train trip is 12 3 to Boston with the family, as well as a Christmas trip to St. Albans, Vermont, solo post semester. So that means Advent Week 3 will be in Vermont, uh, probably from the Hampton Inn.
we're still trying to get the details on that and see if we can make that happen. <clears throat> Anything else? Yes, we have a few more prospects of potential Boston's, but obviously we have to wait until uh, we pay back mom and dad and when we have the time to trade it and so on. So, so yes, a new Boston is on the way, but not right now. Yes, there will be a Thanksgiving Eve service, just like last year on 11-23. Oh, thank you for telling me. The Vermonter videos that I put out there from 10-24... Obviously, there were a lot of error. There's, there's still, there's a lot of cleaning up that they need. Uh, I did not have my stand with me, and obviously, holding that, holding my phone over a long period of time, uh, it certainly did not come out like we wanted. So, uh, hopefully, we can get back up there and do that again. So, we come before him today. In this time of thinking about who we can give thanks to and the offering that he gives to us each and every week is this invitation to come before him and to remember what really matters to each and every one of us to receive the call to worship. God's promises are awesome. During difficulty, God gives us a word of hope. Something new is coming. We stand eagerly on tiptoes, awaiting God's new creation. Prepare your hearts to receive God's mighty blessing. Open our hearts and spirits, Lord, to be ready and receive all that you have to offer. Amen. And will you please rise and say with me, number 576, the steadfast love. Past love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, this afternoon we come before you on a beautiful fall day. You're 
during continual change, you remain steadfast in your love for us. You are created something new, a new heaven and earth. Each day offers newness of hope and faith. Let us open our hearts and spirits to your creative word for us that we may learn, grow, and serve as effective witnesses to your love and power as we worship you this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, the prayers that I received, I uh, use those, but I also use them as my own. So we're not plagiarizing. To God be the glory. God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon received. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. All right, very good. Please be seated. And our anthem today is Jesus, You're My Place by Heather Sorensen.
All right, very good. And it is true that he is our place, especially in times of hardships, and certainly some of the things that I have been through personally in the last year. So thank you, Wyatt. That was very pretty. So we come to the place of prayer today, and there is there is quite a bit that we need to pray about uh, today. We want to remember the victims in the horrible massacre in Parkland, Florida, back in 2018. We pray that they have the strength and remind them that he is there to offer his strength and his spirit to all of those affected by one person's horrible actions. We continue to pray for a new Boston. We continue to pray for Charlie Eduardo and just hoping that eventually we just get some answers to, you know, why everything happened a year ago and how, why is it affected us so much now. Um, we want to think about, you know, we only have about a month left of this semester and it's kind of been the tale of two semesters you know off to the slow start and all of a sudden now in a better place and of course i will give you opportunity to lift up those that you know and the prayer song today is 2108 oh how he loves you and me Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What can he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Lord, this afternoon we come before you knowing that you are our place. In good times and bad times, during the day and at night. We know that you are with us through everything that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. You are with us at school, at work, and at home. We think of those the victims of the Parkland massacre that occurred four years ago. And we pray that those families and of all of those affected by one person's actions, that you would give them strength and encourage them and recognize the fact that you are there with them. And we pray that the one that did that never be released from prison and never have a chance for parole. As he is in the place where he deserves to be. Not that we wish ill will on anybody. But for this one individual. He's right where he needs to be. It would be nice, nice if he got the death penalty. But we know in Florida it has to be unanimous. But a little closer to Lebanon we think of the following. We continue to pray and hope a new Boston Terrier comes. The excitement and joy a new pup brings and also the responsibility of having one. We want to keep Wilbur's memory alive and also cherish the new one as much as we've loved and cherished him over the past 12 years. We think of the Barnaby family. Specifically, we think of their son. Why is it affecting us so much now? 
the hurt and pain of 10-1 continues to have its lingering effects on me. To be triggered and to feel sad and to almost feel like crying at the most inopportune times and in inopportune places, as that is what I'll be talking about in the message coming up shortly. We think of Eduardo. Excuse me. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so is to this end. Your steadfast love never ceases. It is new every morning. And we continue to show that in these services. You are alive and, and with us. As it is in that prayer that you saw us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, how he loves you and me and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary did go, did go. His love for sinners to show. What he did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. So it is operatory time, which means this is the time where you guys have the chance to subscribe to this channel and to continue checking out some of those other videos I've been working on. So every week I will be doing a football simulation. I have gone ahead and done the Patriots next two games between the Jets and the Vikings. However, with no New England playing this week, I will do a randomly selected game for this week. So with all that in mind, 
I invite you to please subscribe and continue to check out some of those other videos as well. And our offertory today is This is the Air I Breathe. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offering.
Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the air we breathe in your living presence. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world as we continue our path to the end of 2022. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. All right. So the reading today comes from 2 Corinthians 7. And this is talking about an offering that we can give to somebody, specifically if we want somebody to come back to us. So verse 10, and then... 8, 1 to 11. The stress that drives us to God does that. It turns us around. It gets us back in the way of salvation. We never regret that kind of pain, but those who let distress drive them away from God are full of regrets, end up on a deathbed of regrets. Now, friends, I want to report on the surprising and generous ways in which God is working in the churches in Macedonia province. Fierce troubles came down on the people of those churches, pushing them to the very limit. The trial exposed their true colors. They were incredibly happy, though desperately poor. The pressure triggered something totally unexpected, an outpouring of pure and generous gifts. I was there and saw it for myself. They gave offerings of whatever they could, far more than they could afford, pleading for the privilege of helping out in the release of poor Christians. This was totally spontaneous, entirely their own idea, and caused completely off guard. What explained it was that they had first given themselves unreservedly to God and to us. The other given, given simply flowed out of the purposes of God, working in their lives. That's what prompted us to ask Titus to bring the relief offering to your attention. So that what was so well begun could be finished up. You do so well in so many things. You trust God. You're, tit you're articulate, insightful, passionate. Love us. Do your best in this too. I'm not trying to order you around against your will. But by bringing in the Macedonian's enthusiasm as a stimulus to your love, I am hoping to bring the best out of you. You are familiar with the generosity of our master Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it away for us. In one stroke, he became, he became poor and we became rich. So here's what I think. The best thing you can do right now is to finish what you started last year and not let those good intentions grow stale. Your heart's not, your heart's been in the right place all along. You've got what it takes to finish it up. So go to it. Once the commitment is clear, you do what you can, not what you can't. The heart regulates the hands. This isn't so others can take it easy while you sweat it out. No. You're shoulder to shoulder with them all the way. Your surplus matching their deficits. There's, in the end, you come out even. 
as it is written, nothing left over to the one with the most, nothing lacking to the one with the least. Here is the reading, and may God the blessings of the reading of these holy words. So, what does he mean by an offering? He basically is saying, you know, we can give somebody ourselves. Maybe you're trying to get someone back. Maybe you're trying to convince somebody that you want to try again. When we think of the situation on 10-1, there's a, certainly a lot of dynamics still at work. And all of these dynamics are basically, you know, when we go down to West Haven, we feel like we're going to cry. Or even when I was in New York the other day, it still hurt. I was sitting in the Metropolitan Museum. Metropolitan Museum of Art in the Eden area. I was sitting at the table and I almost felt like I was going to cry. Because there is still this hurt. So what can we offer him to get him to come back? Sorry, it's chilly in this house. Chilly in this room today. Anyway. That is a good question. What do you what do you offer someone that did that to you? Well, probably your first step would be to have them finally reach out to you and talk to them and just say to them, say to them what is on your mind you know maybe I'll, maybe I would say to Charlie you know look what you did was not right the way it was done and how it was handled is not appropriate and then to tell them that they are still loved you know, tell them that you miss them, that you want to see them. Now, any other relationship that, I, that I've ever been in, I've done this and it worked. But the reality is, in this particular case, I don't know what would work. Because if you just think of all the momentum that we've established here. You know. I got that job to continue. I have my new car, you know, working extra hours and still using the one resource that I took away from going down there. So do we want, would we want another relationship or would we want to try again with him? I think it would take time. I think it would take a lot of courage for him to realize that what he did that created this is he will start to think of being like, oh, of finally realizing that, oh my God, I, cre I created this for him. Because do you realize That even though he's not here, when going through West Haven on that train, or in this case by bus, it still triggers. It's a trigger of those emotional, that emotional connection that I gain with that city. It's almost like I gain an emotional connection with the train. Because it works. Especially when going down to that end of the state. It works.
you know, I actually am ready. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I actually am writing the second part of that informative speech to persuade you guys to take it and to try it out. Especially for those of you who haven't thought about using it. When I told the instructor that I was going to do a part two of persuading somebody to do it, she's like, she's like, well, she's like, uh, she was like, well, I don't usually have students repeat the same topic. I told her, we informed them of how to use it. Now, now let's persuade them to use it. I told her I was a bit obsessive. I do have OCD. And I told her that it would be the last time that we talk about it in this class. And she's like, okay. If you shoot, if you, she's like, okay, you can use it, but I, but I don't approve of it. Okay. Me and that, she's basically saying, okay, go ahead, do what you want. If this is what this is. We are showing her that we can do something and still get the same results that we want. I could be north of an 80. By the time Thanksgiving rolls around. I'm sorry. I digress there. But just think about this. You know, what could you offer him? You know, what could I offer him to get him to come back into the picture? To just ever so slowly just come back into the picture and start again and reset, start over. Well, the question is, we don't really know what we what we could offer to them. We don't know. I, you know, I was talking with Michelle about this the other day, and certainly be talking with her later. And I said to her, you know, say he did come back. What could I offer to him? And the same question, then it was the same answer to the question. We don't know what we could offer to Charlie to let, to let, for him to slowly come back into the picture and to have him understand the fact that even though I did not approve of what he did that day, nobody did. But for him to understand the fact that he is still loved. And he is still cared about in this house. And for him to realize, I don't think he hates me. I don't believe that at all. I don't think. I think deep down, he just has a lot of his own emotional issues that were never dealt with. And then losing his sibling and, you know, not liking his employment, that can take a toll on somebody. I actually wrote an email to him on Monday, and I told him, look, when, whenever you are ready to talk about this, you know how to get a hold of me. So that makes him think. That might make him think, oh. Nick really does care. Of course, Nick cares. If I didn't care, I wouldn't reach out to him. But since I do care, it's having that those having those emotional connections with your loved ones. Just think of those victims in Parkland. I've been listening to their victim impact statements. And to listen to their stories, it tugs at the heartstrings. You know, you feel bad for these people. And just, just think about how God works in their lives. You know, what was done is done. 
They've lost their children. It was just a normal school day. And then somebody comes in and ruins it for them. In the worst way possible. To turn to violence. And to have. And then for him to just. Not know when to stop. So, I offer my prayers and my condolences to those families in Parkland, and certainly, you know, all of us here in Lebanon will, we want to send our best wishes to them. But for the one that did this, for the one that caused all of that trauma, all of that pain, and all of that horror, his new home, a 9 by 12 cell. Now, in his cell, there will be a table, a bench, and a bed, and a one-way door. Not, he did not think about the consequences of his own actions. So what I was saying was, we would have to think of what can we give somebody in order to get them back? But realize that nothing comes from more and nothing comes from less. So as we head towards that holiday season, who knows what can happen? Anything is possible. And we just have to live out day to day. And we will continue on next Wednesday. Amen. Closing hymn is number 17, Jesus with a friend for sinners.
Hello, a friend. Love and he is with me too. Yeah. You do now receive it more than all in him I find. He has granted me forgiveness. I am his. We are one a friend. Who we end. Hallelujah, what a friend. Let us now depart in peace, who in my name are gathered here. This was the brightness of thy face, and be forever near. Uh, And thank you for watching.